All right, guys, welcome back for another podcast. Uh, this week, we're continuing to move through our uh, assigning and creating accountability. Um, the next series kind of talks a little bit more about the difference between our case reviews and after action report. But again, coming into it, it's all about creating accountability within the workplace. So here we go. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. We took a little bit of a break. Yeah. A few a couple yes. weeks off. Yes. Yeah, people don't people don't realize that that like we're, you know, several hours ahead <laughs> of every single posting at least by two or three, but Except for today. Yes. So <laughs> yes. we re yeah, we restart the catch up process yes. here. Yes. Uh yeah, starting between. with our after action report review, we will use those two words interchangeably here over the yeah. next hour or so. Yeah. Uh again, one of our uh, uh one of our key tools that we use in ha in creating accountable conversations essentially yeah so uh providing a, a deliberate structure that a facilitator can put in front of a gr this one is in front of a group correct. rather than in front of an individual correct so that we can uh essentially uh, set the stage of understanding all of the parts of a problem and, and solve the problem. Yeah. Uh, the after action review, the case review process isn't always j necessarily about like reprimand, reprimanding people or, or whatever no. that might be. It's really ultimately sourced in solving the problem mm -hmm. so that you can just advance forward, which again, next week when we get into the forgiveness model is yeah. really where the rubber meets the road on that. Yeah, yeah, kind of that foundation. And if you guys look at the creating accountability chart, uh, where we kind of talk about the chief clinical officer, senior accountability officer, and we kind of went through the case review um, last week. Um, this is kind of the other side of that when it's, like you said, more of a group type tool. Mm -hmm. um, now, I think when we, I, I'm not going to jump ahead because I want to be very deliberate in how we go through this, but, you know, I think one of the cornerstones of when we start to talk about creating accountability, because that's both in the case review process and the after action report, sort of the similarity mm -hmm. is that they, they are, have the foundation of this forgiveness idea, this forgiveness model. Mm -hmm. um, but really a lot of it is in that root cause system. Mm -hmm. You know, is just basically taking the problem. And I think that's where um, a lot of people aren't expecting where these sometimes go. Mm -hmm. You know, as you start out, whether it's on the individual basis or the group basis, and you start out saying, well, here's the obvious problem. That's the one we need to solve. And it's mm -hmm. like, uh, okay, well, we have kind of a framework to make sure we're solving the right problem. Um, but that's even then in our industry overview, it was like, oh, you start finding, you go root cause and you start saying why, 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 why you start breaking all of these problems down. One problem turns into like 15 different right. small problems mm -hmm. and those 15 small problems then you can start to create five solutions each. Right. Um, it's kind of that same process, but I would say when you start to look at the creating accountability side, that's the overlap. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, but this is now saying, um, rather than on the case review, which is kind of an individual basis to then flip over to the after action review or after action report, um, where now it's a group of people, it's mm -hmm. doing that tactfully. Yes. Uh, one of the things that, uh, when I was working on developing these tools a couple of years ago, uh, we, we had talked about, uh, the, 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 Jen, who I was working with, and a couple other folks were talking about like different types of conflict. So within a case review, typically we don't really have a lot of conflict per se. It's just like we know that there's a problem with, and we're either dealing with it proactively or retroactively. Essentially, uh, either way, it's it's not really like there's not drama typically included in it. And w when there is, likely we end up in an after action re report process. Yes, if it includes multiple people. Right, yeah. right. And yeah. so we typically don't have a lot of the that type of at play with the case review, but in the after action report we do. And the way that I start looking at it um, is what type of conflicts do we want to have? So to, uh, I believe that there are four types of conflicts, at least uh, in, a, in an educational set. And the one that we're trying to avoid is interpersonal. Mm -hmm. So uh, the other three are essentially like we disagree on what you did. We disagree on how you did it. Or I, I don't think it's why, but there's a third one. My apologies. I don't remember it offhand. Yeah, but sure. the fourth is 
uh, is interpersonal. Like, I don't like you now. Right. Like, and, and, and what this process does is a it, great platform to tell me, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, that is not what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> For those that are listening, that was a joke. Yes. Um, but it really, it comes down to setting objective measures within the, this this yeah. review process, so that we can we can disagree on what was done, how things were done, why things were done the way yeah. that they were, yeah. whatever it might be, and not just jumping to, well, you're a terrible person. Right. I don't like you anymore. Now we're not going to talk or, or yeah. whatever resentment might, might uh, come out. And that's why, again, like you had said multiple times prior, that's where the basis of this is in forgiveness. Right. That's, right. The, that's the basement of, of foundation. Yes. So we get out in front of it. Uh, the The... You know, the, then that's why. So we don't end up to the point where we don't like each other. Right. Um, right. This this tool uh, again. I had I had learned about it through the book The Culture Code, uh, which we've referenced a few times. But in that book, they cite directly the United States Marines. It's actually used, I believe, throughout all of the armed forces uh, after every mission, positive, negative, or Otherwise, if there's yeah. an in-between, uh, basically putting all of the variables out there and saying uh, what what went well, what, what what could we have done better, and how, how are we going to do that better next time? Um, and uh, Jocko Willink, who is a podcaster himself, as well as written a few books, was a uh, Marine Corps leader for a number of years, wrote a book called Extreme Ownership that really dives into the nitty-gritty of how this works. But we understand that not everybody has all that time to read a book such as that. Yeah, uh, I'll source his YouTube. He has a, a TED talk that he did uh, called Extreme Ownership. Too, yeah. I'll throw that in the, in the description that I recommend everybody check out. But really, like it says in the the fourth line of the overview of this, this is not a tool to place blame. Blame, rather, it's a tool to identify improvements within the team. How can we do better? How can we continue to do the things that we are doing well? Uh, moving forward. Um, yeah, and I think what I like about that is saying that it's a tool to identify improvements. I, I think administratively, you have to be open to what this tool is going to identify. And I think if you go into it assuming, well, we as administration have all the answers, everything's already been figured out, this is the policy and this is why, mm -hmm. and you either go through a full after action report or you have multiple and it keeps coming back as saying, well, we've continued to identify that the problem actually sits in a lack of clarity. Mm -hmm. We as administration haven't done a great or good enough job explaining this particular policies or we haven't trained it well enough or maybe it doesn't align with our core values or you know so there are ways and that's when we kind of get through the root cause portion of this mm -hmm. in saying that sometimes what seems to be little individual spats in the clinic which may be interpersonnel mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of when this tool is used a bit more I feel but anyway um, it's again it's getting us back to sort of establishing that accountability and creating unity within the team we're not mm -hmm. saying unity within administration and unity within support staff. It's the whole entire team mm -hmm. um, and ultimately, again, driving back to the core common purpose of serving the patient. So I think that's the other thing that needs to be said is that employees, I think, often take an approach when there is a intimate process such as this where it's like, we're going to get together four different administrators, we're going to have all these different people, it's, it's going under the assumption that we're going to find blame within the staff, mm -hmm. but it's not to say that that's entirely the case, right. um, is that it's, it, it is open on both sides of the fence, because again, mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a unified purpose. One of the things that, uh, kind of going back to what we've talked about uh, in previous podcasts, is when we, when we talked about like, who's at fault between yeah. like the, right. the veterinary team and the caregiver, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of a no fault situation yeah. where it's, it's shared on both sides. And it's yeah. just like, well, we could sit here and stare at each other and point fingers, <laughs> right. but ultimately we're not going to get anywhere. No. So typically the way that that happens is somebody, you know, as it, we, as it says in the accountability model, you know, takes the, the, the makes the personal choice to just, rise above the situation and yeah. say that was me yeah right like i'm yeah. gonna do better and then when that when you when you flip that switch that 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 trigger is is uh pulled what ends up kind of happening is you have an i am spartacus moment mm. where you inspire oh, sure. you inspire the team to just continuously own yeah what it is that they could yeah. what they can improve either themselves or they believe other people can can improve as a team yeah. um it, you just you just have to 
be vulnerable and say, yeah, that was, that was me. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, uh, I had, uh, some friends up this week and, um, I was driving and I had a call come through from, um, our, our, uh, new gal who's in charge of inventory. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it was just kind of like, oh, this is on back order, this is on back order. And she was on speakerphone cause I was driving and it was hands free or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, nobody else was talking in the car. And I was just like, guys, just, I got business. <laughs> just shut your mouths for like five minutes. Yeah. Um, so, uh, basically she had, um, come forward with saying, oh, this is this and this, and this, is. um, but actually I was trying to fix this one problem with, uh, I think it was distilled water. Um, just the, the menu, uh, the supplier was coming through. She's like, I accidentally deleted the entire product out of inventory. Um, while I was trying to solve this solution or to solve this problem, I kind of created a bigger problem, but it is just this one product and we're still going to get what we need. She's like, but I made a mistake and I need help. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, so I was like, oh, no problem. You know, we're, in, we're working together this weekend. Yep, we can handle it, no problem. And she hung up or whatever. And one of the guys um, who was driving with me, he's like, what What was that? And I was like, what was that? Well, I mean, it was just an accident. She hit the delete button, yeah. the, the wrong delete button, because in this one screen, there's like four different ones. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, and he's like, no, 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 no. He's like, you don't, you don't typically have open communication like that in any business or job experience he's ever had where it's like i made a mistake i need help mm -hmm. let's find a solution so right. that's you kind of say this i am spartacus moment where it's just like as you start to lead forward and saying like no we make mistakes and other people make mistakes and you step up and you just own it i mean that's our accountability mm -hmm. um is that's i mean where she, she was already in the number six own it category i did this i thought i was fixing this but i did screw something up in the process let's figure out a solution wonderful right because it's that environment again it's right. based in forgiveness but you know there was no need for us to include well you know i made this because you know you never showed me how to do this and you know this other person and it's like no it's not fruitful to any of it mm -hmm. so it was just even as of three days ago we had um someone who has no business experience with our company just as someone who's listening to a phone call be like wow you guys okay that was a pretty simple example but that's those aren't words that you hear right you know and that 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 specifically saying i made a mistake mm -hmm. it's kind of when we get into the forgiveness model and saying you know the forgiveness side too like mm -hmm. requesting forgiveness that part mm -hmm. is really awkward too but mm -hmm. anyway well yeah so what you're talking about is what happens when the case review process and the after action report Correct. process have already been yes. touched on or yep. utilized because when you when you first kick off like it's it's cool if you're willing to just put yourself out there and own mistakes and you're yes. definitely going to improve your culture and your business if you just flat out just you you become the vulnerable one and you put yourself out there but Sometimes when you don't have these other processes in place, what will happen is you just end up being the one that takes the bus all the time. I had actually seen that in a couple other businesses where the owner would be super vulnerable and own everything. Like sure. if, if, a, if an employee that was just on the line, like sanded something wrong sure. and he like he wasn't he's not responsible to train that person, but or whatever it might be, he would still own it. And then yep. like what? Well, but he never he didn't have processes in place to hold other people accountable and sure. to have these difficult conversations he would just own it and say i'm just going to figure out how to fix it and he did it extremely well yeah. but his scalability was tough sure because what ended up happening is as his his business was has started would start to grow yes is that everyone would just look at him as the problem sure so yeah. not, so he was the visionary right. similar to someone like yourself yeah. except he would own all of the problems say well i just didn't do my job well enough yeah and then everyone would just look at him and every time something would go wrong, say, why didn't you predict this? And why didn't you fix it right away? Right. Well, that's when you got it. That's when we started to teach him to turn it around and be like, well, I did. Yeah. I did actually teach you how to do this. And, and now we're talking about uh, some accountability working that, that working down, I guess you could say, yeah. or side to side, however you want to look at it. Um, because, yeah, yeah, like you said, for specifically for scalability. I mean, to, yeah, yeah, right. If if you if you as uh, as Dr. Carlo were to own every single problem and try to come up with every single solution, uh -huh. 
I mean, you did for a while. Yes. And then yeah, you that found was that that's not possible. That was it before you and I started working together, right. with Jen, and uh, you know, uh, in that capacity. Is that that's like you said, extreme ownership. It's mm-hmm. if I own this problem, I can control it. Yes. Um, yeah. But like you said, is that if if in part of controlling the problem is one, sometimes I feel like there is a push to make yourself the martyr. Mm-hmm. So it's like, oh, you know, I am at fault for this, but feel bad for me because I'm at fault for this. I am in charge of, you know, so it's a kind of play the, the negative side of that. But in taking the ownership to then implement new tools, it's kind of like we said with the after action and sort of how um, the root cause component works. Right. Is that it keeps coming back to being the same process issue. Yes, as administration, yes, as ownership, it's probably your job to say that process is broken. Let's figure out the solution to that process. But we have other people who are functioning in that process who they themselves need to be accountable to their own their right. own part right um and it's often what we talk about is the a1 you know a b c d employee so i don't know if we've brought it up before but we say kind of your ideal employee is you give them the criteria of a b c and d and they can do their job right. um it becomes increasingly more difficult when you have employees that can only function on the a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 b1 b2 b3 b4 b5 so if you guys ever hear us bring that up in our podcast in the future it's as you have to get more specific like you said this extreme ownership and it's mm-hmm. saying well i'm now going to come up with every single a1 a2 a3 but that it's a1 a b c d a2 right. a b c d yep. so as you start to take on that level of ownership i think we can have input on those solutions mm-hmm. um, but again the example we had with the employee on the inventory side and saying i made a mistake i need help what we're saying is this is the tool it, basically you're trying to get to that mm-hmm. you're trying to get to a point where getting through all of this between defining accountability, assigning accountability, and creating accountability, you will start to have less after action reports as mm-hmm. the team starts to become more accountable. Right. If you just have a team who is constantly in the own it and solutions category, you will almost never have to have an after action. No. Um, but no. this is a tool that anticipating that most uh, businesses are going to be in a world in which you are absolutely going to need right. something like this. Yeah, it's, it's essentially a teaching tool. Yeah. Now, again, though, if if you also have a big team or a team that you have a lot of volatility sure. on, in cases or something like that, it may be something that you even find that you use on a, or or even if you have the available time to, it can be a good just continuous touch point. Yeah. Uh, what you might what you might find in the medical setting or medical profession is going to be your M M&M and M rounds, so the right. mortality morbidity. Right. So I feel like in a very, very medical way, that process has been present for many years. Mm-hmm. Um, we're talking about a non-medical outcome where mm-hmm. it's not, oh, we talk, let's talk about M&Ms because we could have um, treated this patient differently. Let's all learn how to manage kidney disease or diabetic ketoacidosis or, you know, mm-hmm. Addisonian crisis. We've, we as a team can learn on how to manage this patient. We're saying that is what is half of what our job is. We've said it multiple times is that mm-hmm. is the job side. We're talking sort of the culture side and mm-hmm. that culture side then comes down into what we're talking about for after action. So you can say M M&M and M for, you know, that side, we would still ultimately end up using a case review in lieu of an right. M&M. Right. Um, but it's a very similar process. Well, and as an example, too, uh, and then I apologize if I don't remember the exact details, but I do remember when we had first launched this and ran through one of the first ones of these, what the conversation was, was it started as a case review process with one of our doctors where a patient had uh, experienced, I believe, a side effect to a uh, to a, a, a anesthetic induction medicine or something like that. It was some some. There was a medical decision made, and then um, one of the technicians had uh, disagreed with it with that decision because it was like that doesn't seem right, yeah. and then never said anything because the vet made the decision, and then the technician sure. was like, oh, uh, okay, well, stay in your lane, right? Stay yeah, in your lane, yeah, sort know of your thing, place, right? right. Uh, which is not appropriate, but it's right, right, just saying right. that's the mental way in which we're trained is stay in your lane. The side effect kicked in. Um, I believe the patient had uh, survived the case. I, again, I, I, I hope you remember the one that I'm referring to. But either yeah. way, uh, it serves as a good example because um, ultimately what happened was it went sideways. Yeah. Uh, they fixed it. And then after the case, the technician was like, well, you shouldn't have done that anyways. And then uh, the doctor came to to us, which we were kind of working with her anyways, right, and right. was like, "This person's to blame because they didn't tell me what I was doing wrong." Right. And that was the that was essentially like the trigger of yeah. We started with a case review because it was like, well, our veterinarian made an error. Yeah, it was right. It was a medical error. A medical error, yeah. and then 
said the blame word. Right. And then it's like, <laughs> right. oh. Which is number two on our accountability letter. So what you're saying is yeah. we actually have to bring everyone together so we can talk about this. Yeah, yeah. Because what, it, what had kind of stemmed off of that in the time between the actual error and the time that the case review happened was interpersonal conflicts started to arise. Correct. So talking from a root cause perspective, interpersonal conflict is typically a symptom of something, another root cause typically rooted in a different type of more objective conflict. And what this did was basically we put the, the two together and said, all right, what happened? Where did process break down? Uh, let's make sure that we're all clear on what that process is, yep. and then where did where did we break off yep. essentially? And we'll get into the actual uh, yeah, semantics yeah, yeah. of the five yeah. questions, getting it out on the table, so to speak. Exactly. Yeah, we just basically get it out just there. said if if I have this conversation with one person, I'm going to be assuming what the other person did. Yes. And I and as, as soon as that happens, we're wasting our time mm-hmm. and spinning our wheels. Let's just bring everybody in on this. Right. There's right. no there's no point in assuming that we know everything that happened. Yeah. yeah. Um so yeah, again, like that kind of goes into our when to use this. So the most effective time for individuals to use the after action review is just after the conflict occurred. Delaying yeah. that review process will often cause cause individuals affected by a conflict to lose details and data and uh, to achieve accountability. So it was actually a time when we had a little bit of a delay. Yeah. We actually did lose some stuff but also conflict a a different type of conflict also was allowed to be created in the absence of accountability yeah yeah so i had um as another example Mm -hmm. um before again we kind of get into the rules of engagement and so on and so forth um is uh i had i had had an example come up recently to which um i had owned uh for both of us so (laughs) i understand that it (laughs) it wasn't like a true after action but um we had this one um employee, uh, she came from the state level mm-hmm. um, to then work with us um, on uh, sort of PR and marketing and such. Um, and in that world in which you're in working for the state, it's stay in your lane, mm-hmm. you don't cross administration, administration's never wrong, you know, it's yeah. this kind of like very, very hierarchical world. And um, so there is a little bit of overlap between uh, Ben's position as marketing and this individual as uh, public relations. And um, she had put together um, all of this. uh, uh, There was an event coming up. It was here's some things that need to go to this event, right? Water bottles or yeah, 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 whatever. So um, part of that was then uh, she took off. She went on her trip, but it was Mm -hmm. like Ben. All you have to do is (laughs) take this one thing, this box, and that banner to this place because I already talked to that person and she's expecting that box and that banner. Right. And then it was like, oh, I didn't take that banner and the I took two other different boxes I wasn't supposed to. Yes. 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 I definitely botched Botched the hell out of that one. Botched it. It fucked it. Yeah. So um but what had happened was um is in in the day where she had come back, she's like Jesus, you know, and then it was the cleanup, right? Mm-hmm. Was I got to go pick the right stuff up? I got to get this, drop it off. You know, we're now delayed on what this event is, and you know, then uh, there's, there's all these sort of different pieces to it, right? Mm-hmm. Those parts were never brought up to us as far as how it had affected her in that capacity. Mm-hmm. So when you and I had sort of, you know, you were aware of it immediately, and I became aware of it as we were about to do a podcast. Like, I kind of just shrugged it off, and it was mm-hmm. kind of like. Oh yeah, that's that's kind of funny, you know. Like Ben, you're kind of an idiot, you know, <laughs> you know. But it was like for me, uh, what had happened was I blew it off as kind of a joke, mm-hmm. um, you know. It's like, oh yeah, a mistake was made. Um, but what I had sort of failed sight on was sort of all sort of the other trickle down components to it, and we ended up just joking around about it like the whole time in front of yeah. this employee, yeah. and it was <laughs> so like. So her and I then ended up having this conversation and, um, you know, it was that all we were taught, like I was actually honest to God, I was, I was, I was, I wasn't even, I I don't even think I was in denial. Maybe I was in denial and I didn't even know it, but the whole time she's talking about me about what is the problem? What is the problem? What is the problem? She's like, you don't understand the problem. You understand the problem. And I was like, Ben didn't take the right boxes to the thing. And she's like, well, yeah, that's part of the problem, but you're just, you're in denial about what the actual issue is. And I'm like, okay, then we need to get an after action put together like you and Ben and Annie can facilitate because it's been about a couple months, right? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, about one, yeah. Mm-hmm. About a month. And we need to sit down and actually talk about this. And right. she's like, I'm not, you know, I just, you know, I mean, you guys can if you want, but she was in this mindset 
that administration can do no wrong. Right. So for us, this interaction is a lot of it was in her head. Now I'm not I'm not saying making excuses or blame or whatever, mm -hmm. but this is what happens when you don't have this kind of open and honest environment for open and honest and professional communications. Right. Is it's like, you know, she was just under the assumption that since we laughed it off, which I owned and apologized <laughs> for, like I, I still I say this now because it wasn't the right way to handle it. I'm right. not I'm not making a joke about me making a joke about it and not and owning it. It really wasn't the appropriate way to right. handle it. Um, but after she had left, um, and I remember had saying, it was like, yeah, you really kind of screwed this one up manually. Yeah, I know. So at a later mm -hmm. time, uh, what we failed upon, and this is what we had sort of identified, what we failed upon was in the moment accountability. Mm -hmm. So we, if there was a problem. It was just like, oh yeah, whatever. But we didn't really then at a later time, you and I had a conversation where you were like, yeah, I am accountable to this and I did screw it up. And I believe a week later you had gone and be like, you know, I, I totally botched it. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So we had mm -hmm. failed on in the moment accountability, uh, but we had succeeded in overall accountability right. on half of the problem. Okay. Half of the problem was you brought the wrong boxes. Mm -hmm. The other half was sort of this trust and unity standpoint where it was like, oh, my position doesn't matter, you know, or mm -hmm. this, the, the work that I'm doing doesn't matter. All of this is just a joke. You know, so there was kind of this whole other side to it. Mm -hmm. And after we sort of broke through, after we kind of got to a point where I'm just like, you know, she's like, you guys aren't being accountable. We didn't even know that that other side existed. Mm -hmm. And that's why, like I said, I was probably in denial about it some capacity because I just didn't know. Mm -hmm. um, but what I was trying to explain to her was like, as soon as we are aware that this stuff occurs, because it, like you said, it went from being this sort of what and how and why, mm -hmm. and it flipped over to this interpersonal conflict. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, basically I was like, we need to do an after action report. She's like, yeah, you know, she's like, I'm over it, you know, water under the bridge. And I'm like, clearly it's not water under the bridge. Like, and I just kept pushing and I kept pushing and kept pushing. And then it was just this explosion of emotion and it's sort of like right. all this other stuff. And I was like, thank you. Right. Thank you for finally letting that out. And basically what I had done was, is I had ran her through an after action report, yeah. um, basically speaking on your behalf because we are yeah. on the same accountability yeah. side. Right. Um, but it was exactly that. And at the end of it, she was like, holy shit. She's like, this tool works. Yeah. You know, she's like, I didn't. And at the end of it, she, you know, she kind of got a little emotional, but she was like, she's like, I didn't even realize that my time spent in the state had negatively impacted me to the extent that I was immediately distrusting of any type of administration. Mm -hmm. And that's one of our core values because there wasn't any trust there. Mm -hmm. I figured there wasn't going to be any accountability to this other piece that was affecting me as a result of this one problem for which we had been accountable for 50% of the problem, mm -hmm. but not the entire thing. Mm -hmm. So that's where, again, like I said, we haven't really gone through the full you know, kind of details after action report, but this is another example of where when people come into the organization and it's not to say she's, she is, I would say, among the more accountable people that I know. Mm -hmm. um, but even in then, you kind of get these little things that hide inside of them and hide underneath them. And they're like, you know, well, this is the way they showed me administratively. They deal with problems when they have mistakes, which I think it's okay to laugh off problems occasionally. But right. it can't be at the expense of how it affects someone else culturally. Right. Um, right. And again, this was, I think, you know, maybe a little bit of a longer example. But it's another example of how, for me, in my mind, I knew how an after action report ran i knew if we got together this is gonna be how it was gonna be run and i honest to god it took um because some of it was by text some of it was by phone call but it was several hours mm -hmm. you know and just, she was just like i'm exhausted at the end of this she's like but i'm really glad that we did this because mm -hmm. now i understand when to use this tool how mm -hmm. to use this tool and as a result is now understanding that it quote unquote the leadership team is more approachable right you know we're not we're right. not on high our organization chart puts administration in the dirt you know we yes. are the foundation of the company we're not you know some huge pyramid we're kind of down in the trenches so to speak and that's that's ultimately what this really comes down to and what the what that concept of extreme ownership is all about is how in uh, actually gary v says it all the time leaders work for employees not the other way around mm -hmm. that's really what this is is if you yeah. if uh if uh anybody on the team sees somebody else that is creating some sort of problem or something like this, and they really want to just address it, this is the way to do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the nice part about it, too, is typically those problems are sourced in specific scenarios. Mm. So like that one, like I absolutely, specific. I absolutely made a mistake. Yeah. But what it did, and absolutely, you and I are, are on the same page it, on that, and I have yeah. the utmost trust that you 
spoke for me and if, yeah. if not i'll double check yeah. on it too. no i absolutely i threw you under the bus the whole time that's f- yeah totally like, fine you know, ben it was I, all him the I whole time do make a great speed bump <laughs> <laughs> um but really what that comes down to is the fact that uh now i lost my train of thought yeah. i'm just saying words <laughs> I know, to see, see if they come that, back that's what happens when i, when I just start interjecting in but, but ba- oh now it, there yeah, it is there it is yeah specific scenario i made a mistake but some other stuff was able to be hashed out at the, yeah. in, in the in the interim also. Yes, yes. Because typically, and again, we'll talk about this in the forgiveness model too, is that we don't, we will just generally because we're non-confrontational type people. Yeah. Is that we'll we'll shrug off the little things here and there, yeah. and one, you know, yeah. a couple couple things here and there. Yeah. But as they start to pile up, like, yeah, maybe if this would have been the first thing that i screwed up which yeah. i'm not immune to mistakes i make yeah. them all the time right um it, it may it maybe would not have boiled over to that point correct but this process allowed it to not harden and just yeah. become just like i just simply just don't like you anymore yeah it, yeah and that's it that's why i think the latter um to work into the after action report is so important because that was one part that she wasn't actually ready in that example. She wasn't ready to actually hear that there was two parts to this problem. One part was the objective, the boxes didn't get delivered. The other part was sort of like the, hey, hey, you know, mm-hmm. kind of a type reaction to it. Um, but she had to recognize that she actually waited. That's number four on the, on the list is like, right. you knew there was a problem, but you chose to wait. You chose to not say anything. And that's where, as we got into the forgiveness model, which we'll talk about at a later time, is it's not like, you know, this, the forgiveness model, this kumbaya thing where everyone says sorry to each other. It's like, no, we're actually of the problems because there was multiple problems. We have identified that, you know, one of the problems we apologize for in of ourselves and say, you know, request forgiveness in that capacity. But you also have to own the fact that you waited. Yeah. Like you hung on to that for whatever it was, four to six weeks, which is an inappropriate thing to do from an accountability standpoint because it you would consider it to be, oh, it's small. Oh, mm-hmm. it's just a piece. Mm-hmm. But what that had exploded over into is oh i was doing that for five years at my previous job and holding on to everything mm-hmm. and this this and this and this and this so mm-hmm. yeah it's like you said just pulling up is these little pieces these little things along the way that start to eat at you and build up to be a bigger problem you root cause it with an employee eight months later and it's like you're still pissed about something from eight months ago it's like fuck yeah i am you right. know but you shouldn't be right you know, that's not how a team is built and as you build with using this tool that reaction of being upset for extended periods of time just tends to go away yeah. because you just start saying it. Yes. You just start to have in the moment accountability between mm-hmm. between people. Again, yeah. as we had talked about uh, in our in our case review process, or I, I believe it was, is that um, if you try to have that at your onset, if you try to have in the moment accountability yes. without having these tools having been exercised and people being trained on it, you're probably going to make your issues worse because it's just going to turn into more and more interpersonal conflict. You're going to create more drama. You're going to have less accountability because people are just going to look at each other and say, you're an asshole. Right. (laughs) Which I get. (laughs) Right. And not you personally, but also if we had done that, you would have, you actually probably received that sentiment a few times as we started to even Mm -hmm. implement this process. But that brings us to, Rules of engagement number one is open, honest, and professional. Yes. So you, you, you know, it's absolutely get it all out there. But and you know, I say don't pull punches with honesty. But you yeah. Don't, but you also don't have to be mean about it. Well, because it's it's coming back to the four types of conflict. Right. Is that if it's open, honest, and professional communication, is that it's not making a dig as an interpersonal way in which we're communicating. Right. Um, it's more so on saying like, okay, if it's open and honest, the way in which you performed this task was shit. Right. You could probably leave the shit part out. You know, <laughs> you know, you know, it was like the way you perform this task uh, affected patient care negatively. Right. You know, and, well, why? That's now you're getting into root cause. Why did it affect it negatively? Mm-hmm. Jump down to the next one. You still have to try to not say shit, but, you know, it, it, you jumped out. But yes, the open, honest, and professional communication. Um, I think open, honest, and professional communication doesn't mean that people can't, quote unquote, get it out. Because right. I think the way in which some people communicate are louder than others. Or um, more emotional. More emotional than others. And mm-hmm. that's where when in this example with a sort of laughing in her face, for me to come back and um, you know say, when I have even a person in my own 
personal life or in my business life, if emotion starts to come into it, they're crying or they're upset or whatever, I'm, I am completely unfazed by it. Not because I don't care, mm -hmm. but for me, I'm so focused on what the objective component is and what the solution is. I'm like, I understand this emotional thing is something that you have to have, mm -hmm. or you had pent up emotions that need to get out. Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead and ha like we said before, have that first reaction. Let's get mm -hmm. to your second one. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of what I'll work them through. So part of that open, honest, and professional communication, it is not unprofessional to have emotion. No. At, at all. No. Um, but it's, you know, just you have to kind of go because you could actually make the argument, like it says in here, actually going the other way is that being overly nice mm -hmm. is also going to be a critical waste of time. Right. You know, so it's it's just having this kind of just very open and honest and let's just let's just honestly talk about it. And if it's on your mind, just get it out there and then right. we'll sift through is this the problem and can it be you know, root cause or whatever. Exactly. And then once we get into the tool, we'll see kind of where that distinction between objective and emotional yeah. uh, data points is is, is determined. Yeah. But yeah, it, it, don't just just say it. Like yeah. we're not we're not here to yeah. to be nice or to be an a hole. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. let's find a, a nice moderate ground. Just just get it out. Like yeah. we're all here to say stuff and even yeah. if you because I've I've run through these uh, in in other teams too, where like I've had somebody look at somebody else and say, "I really just do not like you," <laughs> like, like I'm trying to be as objective as possible and yes. say, "Every time I see you, I just get mad." <laughs> Jesus, like, I'm, no kidding, dude. Like that's a very real thing, and I yeah. I guarantee somebody's gonna listen to this and be uh, like, "Yeah, I yeah. have that reaction with a number of people that yeah. I work with," yeah. because I just don't even know what to do anymore. Yeah. I just see that person. I I I, I, I don't I don't, I don't see the specific mistakes that they've made or yeah. the way that they've been rude or whatever mm. to me. I just see somebody I don't like anymore. Right. So when we get to that point, and that's again like you, number one, we have some stuff we got to work through. Right. But that's when you start to ask why, and so the specific scenarios are so critical. Yeah. Because if you can work through it in one scenario and yep. say what you did was objectively wrong in this way or whatever it might be. Yeah. You can start to grow beyond it and start yeah. to deal with that because that's a big problem. If yeah. that's on your team, that's gonna even yeah. if it's between two people, it's gonna crush your culture slowly. Yeah. yeah. Even if one or both of those people end up leaving as well, you know, I yeah. mean, it's 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 an unfortunate end when you're trying to build a team. Mm -hmm. You know, to say I just don't like that person anymore. What happens if the re like you said, why, 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 why? What if it comes out that the reason why you don't like them is because they are more appropriately aligned with the core values? And you as an individual more aligned to your own interests. Right. You know, so, right. and that's then where it's like, oh, you don't like that person, but you're actually the one that needs to go, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. So and, and I don't think we I don't think we really had any after actions that have ended in termination that way. So that's maybe probably a, a, a far example. There, were, there have been a few uh, terminations that were on their way yes. towards it. Yeah. But then ultimately had yeah. had an accountable conversation with the individuals that decided to offboard themselves beforehand. Sure. Yeah. Yep. 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 Um, so uh, to go along with that then too and talking about these after action reports is is the second is everyone must participate. Now again, Have you to. and I can make exceptions to that rule right. now. Right, right. But Which isn't the best for us to say on a podcast where we're trying to teach people the tool and saying do I don't need to say, be. <laughs> not as we do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on. Yes, but yes, yes. Rule of engagement number two. Yes. Everyone on the project uh, or case must participate. And, and and really that is is so critical in the idea idea that you simply do not want to assume what somebody else would say or do. Yeah. Now, again, that's where you and I can make yeah. that distinction and say, yeah. like, we've we figured out to the point where we're pretty much just on the same page yeah, on yeah. almost everything. Most, yeah. and, and I would already know, because if there was anything that you would have said that, or even like where you didn't know what the answer would have been, you would have brought it to me anyways. Uh, yeah, so there's yeah. a high level of trust that's included in that. Yeah. But again, yeah. that's not the norm. Don't try to start yeah. by doing that because yeah. what you're going to do is you're going to start putting words in other people's mouths, yeah. which could again breed yeah. other types of conflict yeah. that you really don't need. And actually in this, uh, when we kind of said there was the two parts to this where it was like you deliver the wrong boxes, we sort of laughed in our face. Like it was all even in this conversation with this individual, it was still I thought I thought she was actually talking about some other administrative interaction we had with a different employee, mm. because in my mind, I was I was so fixated on the fact that it was like you deliver the wrong boxes. All right. Yeah. he OK, fine. Whatever. That I thought she was actually speaking on behalf of a different employee. Mm -hmm. I'm like, where would you be getting any information of us being not accountable otherwise? Like, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. um, and then that's when it sort of came out. No, it's all the same problem. 
Yeah. It's all the same thing. It's just yeah. it's just part two. Um, but yes, that's where in doing kind of your formal after action, you're exactly right. It's not making assumptions and it's not putting words in people's mouths. Mm-hmm. You know, we'll- the other thing too that and it goes along with with our with our question uh, number two uh, that's in the in the in the, oh, the actual, italics yeah, yeah is um, what were our actual results and this is where people get to actually say their piece. So we make it very deliberate about you know we're if you're on a team you're going to have people that are naturally more extroverted than sure. more introverted and if the extroverts simply dominate the room what will happen over time is the introverts number one won't participate when they're invited and then will uninvite themselves over time and just say you're not going to listen to me anyways why yeah. would i be a part of this yeah so uh definitely make sure everyone part and that's why it's participates not necessarily that they're present yeah but we, we you need to have everyone engage at some level and that's why when you get back to number one you can have an emotional reaction like if this is something that's truly hurtful or something to you like just get it out right because as soon as you let that off your chest yep. you can start to move into figuring out what the solution is rather than mm. just holding on to that emotional reaction so participate yes uh the third show up yeah, yes. Uh, and, it, and it is a practice, though, honestly. You mm-hmm. know, I mean, if it's like just show up to practice. You know, you're on the team, show yeah. up to practice. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's just the same thing as as you go through these and see how they perform, they become less scary is yeah. one. You're so right. even if you're not a huge player in it, but you're there and it's like, oh, this is not a reprimand-based system. This mm-hmm. is a growth and an improvement system. Mm-hmm. Um, then you're, you're, you're more likely to say things in the moment, get to that in the moment accountability, and then also continuing to then, like you said a moment ago, invite yourself to after right. action reviews rather right. than uninvite yourself. The, that, that, that breaking the seal is always the hardest part. It's the same when I have to train people on the CSS role. It's like the first five phone calls are going to suck. <laughs> like you're going to screw them up and yeah. you're just going to have to be okay with that. Yeah. And guess what? After number five, yeah. your mouth isn't going to betray you. Right. And you're just going to, you're just going to yeah. work your way through it. Yeah. Just, just the just, talk path. As yes. It yes. Uh, third rule of engagement is to focus both on results and the process. Another way of wording that is focus on the, res- uh, the objective, but also the, uh, intention. Sure. So they're both valid. And if you disregard one or the other, you're missing key variables. Yeah. What tends to happen, uh, is a lot of times, at least in, in the practice that we have had with this is we, um, we try to excuse the results because the intention was ideal. Sure. Uh, so, like, I didn't mean for that to happen. Right. Like, that's an excuse. It doesn't sound like an excuse, but you're excusing the poor result because you had good intention. Yeah, what is that? Uh, good intentions pave the road to hell. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so with that, and, 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 but the other thing, too, is let's say you have somebody that's just like a shade character but is really good at developing a good results sure. or, or I shouldn't say like maybe objectively good. I don't know what the right word is because there's the other side of that, which if they cut the process to pieces, like, is it really a good result? Yeah. But they at least obtain the objective. Correct. But they stomped over everybody to get there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do it my own way because the result in the end worked. Right. Yes. Yes. So both of those are bad. Yes. By the way. Yes. <laughs> right. Right. Um, so when that happens, we have to get out all of the details of how did we get here and what happened. Yeah. Did we succeed? Was it for the right reasons? Did we succeed? Was it for the wrong reasons? Right. Did we fail for the right reasons? Fail for the wrong reasons. Right. Right. Uh, and then the last one, again, uh, as we've talked about a few times here, is developing an understanding of the root cause. So this is that why question. So when we get into our five questions of an actual, actual after-action report, typically what will happen is we'll pose a variable, and then we'll say, well, why did that happen? Yeah. And then and just continuing to ask why uh, yeah. until we basically can't anymore. Because yeah. a lot of times what will happen is we'll get, number one, we'll get past that interpersonal conflict and drama. We'll start to get to in, into some more objective mm-hmm. conflict issues, at which point we can start to pinpoint is the issue within within the process itself, is it within clarity within the process itself, the lack of a process in regards to this specific scenario. Like I could probably go on for yeah. a while on like how do we solve these problems because we've been through so many yeah. of these types of conversations. Mm-hmm. But it's really about getting, because if you just leave it at, 
I simply don't like you. Right. Like that's not a result. That's no. that's not that's not something I can really work with. Like, because what's the solution to that? Separate. Right. That's not gonna help a yeah. damn thing. So we really just look at it and and start to ask why and understanding that typically the poor results of this situation are symptoms of something else. Yeah. So let's get down to so we can figure out a more permanent solution. Yeah. And this is kind of the both sides of that on saying both looking at the result and the process and saying mm -hmm. why in an after action report administration has to be equally as open mm -hmm. because that's part of the process side. Yes. You know, so the the result side is is more on um, sort of the implementation on saying uh, you know, here's the process, did you implement it? Did it succeed? Did it fail? And maybe mm -hmm. we're wrong in some regard. So what I really hope people are starting to get the feeling of and sensation of now that we're sort of at the end of the rules of engagement portion um, is kind of how these tools are so interconnected with one another to say that, you know, one, you have to have accountable people. Mm -hmm. If you don't have accountable people, they're, they're not going to be able to get through step one of rules and engagement. They're not mm -hmm. going to be open, honest, and have professional communication. And they're probably not going to participate because they may be having excuses or blaming or denial or whatever it is. Um, and that's then when we start to look more at um, the victims, right? So now we're getting right. into sort of the assigning side. If all you have is a team full of victims, you're going to start to get into that of the rules of engagement into number three, where focusing on the results in the process, it's going to be like, oh, you know, well, you know, it's, it's, you know, about me and it happened to me because of this and you guys and blame, you know, so it's all that same thing. And that's why we've sort of ending with sort of coming into the after action report and forgiveness mm -hmm. is because it's so intimately rooted in these other pages of, of uh, accountability between defining and assigning. Um, if you don't have a team that way, I still feel these tools obviously are going to identify because you can say there's a stop point, mm -hmm. you know, when you go through one of these why points mm -hmm. or one of these why questions, I should say. But it's kind of like having, like I, said, I think maybe we did more of the whiteboard before or whatever, but it's just what can you write on the whiteboard, you know, and you're not going to write 17 paragraphs on the whiteboard. But I feel mm -hmm. like in the after action report, when we start to talk about the results and the focus and the root cause method, some people are mind mappers. Yeah. Where it's like just draw the lines and the circles and the lines and the circles. <laughs> yeah, I may be one of those. Uh, and then the other side is the list. Uh, yeah. We had worked with a, another employee at a different organization here this last week um, where her, her root cause, um, she could handle lists, mm -hmm. you know, but it was the same story, you mm -hmm. know. But of course, for me, I was like, well, let's just put these on pieces of paper and orient them around so that they're more. <laughs> so of we can a, speak the same language. So they're a mind map of a list, you know. So. <laughs> Uh, oh my god! But but yeah. So again, I hope people, uh, l listeners and, and viewers, are um, starting to get that feeling. Yeah. On sort of how all these things sort of intertwine with one another. And and to play into that too is that if if you as the business owner or clinic, just wh wh whatever your role is, if you try to create an accountable team, but you're the only one that wants to do it, and you're going to do it through these tools, you're simply going to be a persecutor. Oh, absolutely. That's it. Yeah. You're just going to be the mean person. Yeah. yeah. Which, yeah. depending on how quality your team is, may not be the yeah. worst thing in the world. So it's funny you bring that up. Um, I had talked with one of my colleagues, I think, two days ago, and it was that exact point. It was between um, her and her business partner, um, on having, um, you know, she wants, uh, she, my colleague wants to have more accountable team. She started to kind of look internal. She's reading the books, you know, mm -hmm. going through our podcast and she's like, wow. She's like, I didn't actually realize how broken everything is or was. She's like, but I want to do this. I'm just not sure my business partner is going to be on board with that. Mm -hmm. And I actually, it was kind of both sides of that, it, you know, is it's like, well, for me, I would, just continue to keep pushing because it's something so important right. and saying, yeah, I don't mind being a persecutor for a short period of time as long as that persecutor ends up becoming a challenger and right. starts to build the entire team with or without your business partner. Mm -hmm. And what will end up happening in that scenario where you're willing to be the persecutor as you're kind of getting unaccountable people out of the organization is you're going to build yourself more towards a place um, of respect right. um, rather than someone that, you know, her concern was, well, while I'm on shift, if I do this, they're just going to, when I'm off shift, they're just going to run to, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like, well, yeah, they're probably going to do that. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, and uh, to her credit, of course, in saying, um, I really need to get my business partner on board with this. I'm like, well, yeah, that's the easier way. Yes. <laughs> you let's know, just go that way. <laughs> I 100% agree with you. I know yeah. that's not exactly what I said, but I 100% agree because it's so much easier if you can do these things together. Right. You know. 
it, it, it yeah, it, it will definitely like if, if you continue to say amongst your team, what could we have done better? Yes. You're never actually playing the persecutor. You're just yes. simply going to be perceived that way. Yes. 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 Uh, a, a true persecutor would be like, you suck. Yeah. And the, the, the challenger <laughs> says, how can we do better? Yes. Yep. So uh, real simple. What what do you need? Number one, advanced planning. Make sure that you have an appropriate amount of time because is this some, getting into the. Um, uh, this is our this is our three like setup rules essentially. Yes. So the end oh, of getting the, into okay. So that's uh, page end of our seven. first page. It's the end of page six, as I have on here. Yep. You're you're working off an older yeah, version. Yeah, an old version. Uh, yes. Basically, uh, advanced planning. So make sure that you have the right amount of time set out. Uh, because again, if this is your first couple, the likelihood of highly emotional conversations happening is pretty high. Yeah. Uh, and, and it goes away. It does go yeah. away, but yep. you got to get people have the, have the time to get stuff off their chest. So make sure that you budget it that time yeah. appropriately as well as so that everyone can continuously pay attention in the middle of this process. And they're yeah. not, they're not on the, on shift while this is going on or something like that. Uh, the second would be a facilitator. So this is essentially going to be your challenger yeah. most of the time, but mm -hmm. somebody who really, really understands the mechanism of this tool. Yeah. And Focused is, on learning and growth. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And wants to create uh, constructive communication. Yeah. Uh, and the third is, is for, and again, this is for everyone, it's a willingness to improve. I'll sometimes refer to this as a growth mindset. But it's the idea sure, of sure. we are all convinced that we're not stationary in these problems. We can get better. We can improve. Um, and if, if somebody is on within this group and, and just continues to say, well, this is going to be a problem because it's always been a problem. Yep. That person is if you have a team, the rest of them are willing to improve. Like, why are you here? Right. Like, I, that's what that's the question that gets asked. However, that that mindset can also be very contagious yeah. uh, because change oh, is, because change is hard. Yes. So that's why I always preempt teams uh, with this, mm -hmm. this idea of being willing to improve. I actually just did it today, where it's like I'm going to start to challenge you guys on how can we grow. I don't I don't need to understand as much of the story anymore. Yeah. Like we've had our chance to get all of this stuff out. Now it's about growing. Now it's right. about improving. And when you get a whole group of people like we've ended up at where it's just right. simply okay what's the problem how do we get better how do we implement it right. that's a growth mindset we're yes. no we're never stationary like you say you don't even want people to be comfortable with the toilet paper <laughs> like I want everything up for change no, everything is up for change <laughs> even the toilet paper yeah. Yeah. but that's but that's a growth mindset yes. obviously in a satirical manner yes but that's exactly what that is yeah yeah so those are kind of the three like setup rules. Make sure that you cover all of those bases, uh, get it planned. Uh, and step one, there's the planning steps. I'll let you guys read that again. You can find that at pawhealth.net slash podcast. Yep. I'll also have it linked in the description. But uh, the next one is actually conducting the after action review. And it's five questions. And it provides everyone the opportunity to speak. And then we get to the point of solving problems. Uh, one, two, and three are essentially number five on our accountability ladder of setting reality. The first three questions. The first three questions, yes. Yep. Uh, so one, what were our intended results? Uh, what did we want to have happen? Uh, going from a morbidity and mortality rate, like our intended result was to have this patient not die right, right. obviously uh, but again that's not always what we're going to be dealing with in terms of our original problem uh, so understand what our intention is and the second is what were our actual results and again this is going to be where we're going to have the big likely emotional blowout <laughs> Sure. Um, if anyone has any children, yeah. this is the poopy diaper. Right. right. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to let it all out yep. and yep. wash the clothes and solve the problem. Yep. But yep. you got to let it out. Otherwise, yeah. it ain't going to end no, well. No, it's not. Uh, and then the third was what was the cause of our actual results. So again, kind of starting to dig into the, these problems and saying, you know, where, where do we stand in terms of these actual results? Again, these are all very valuable, but again, question one is going back to our culture design really is sourced in, are we here to serve the same purpose? That's always one of the first questions that I ask is, all right, 
here's the problem. What was our intended result? And for right. us, it's our intended result is serve the patient. It's right. always the first thing that yeah. comes out and is put on the table. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's because, like the big thing. Like, yeah. Right. Yeah. So we can we can pretty much stop if there's somebody else that's at the table that it's like, well, actually, that's not really why I'm here or whatever it might be. Yeah, sure, like we, sure. we we have an impasse at purpose. So yeah. not to say that the the process has to stop there, but that's definitely a problem that has to be addressed. Yeah, yeah it's a stop really point. Fast. <laughs> or it's yes. like, let's not move on to question two just yet. Right. You know, right. We're yeah. gonna write that down. Yep. <laughs> that's going on our board. <laughs> yes. Uh, but really, it comes down to uh, what, what what outcome did we did we desire to create? Uh, typically, uh, like job descriptions are really useful here. So if we have like somebody yeah. just purely missed uh, something that would be in their job description, like yeah. this was our intended result. Do we have any miscommunication here? Because the actual result is you didn't fulfill point four on your job description at per my understanding. Yeah. Am I missing anything? What were you what do you see in terms of actual results? Yeah. Number the question number two, what were the actual results? Right, right. And and in that that question of what do you see is typically when it's like there's either great resistance because they're afraid of it yeah. or they just let it out and yeah. like just blah, all the emotional yeah. stuff and like keep going. Yeah. Get it yep. out. I'm writing down. Yep. yep. I'm yep. writing it all down. We're going to take it all in because like now we're going to get into what was the cause of all of those actual results, both sides of the coin. So I'm going to see mine and that you didn't fulfill point number four on your job description or right. patient died or yeah. Whatever, whatever other thing, whatever po point of the problem is out there, but also all of the stuff that they had. Yeah. And like, it, oh, so you didn't do that, but you blamed me because of this thing that happened a while ago. So now you and I have some stuff to work on too, yeah. which is awesome. Thanks for bringing that right, up. Right, because right. Because I want to get past that right, also. Right, right, right. And which that, in our example with, you know, the, you know, deliver the boxes, haha. Huh, you know, it's yes. like that was kind of then what we're saying is there's these other parts where what were the actual results? And it's like, well, for me, the, the box didn't get delivered. Right. You know, but yeah, it's like just get it out there right. um, so we can look at the cause and then we can start to see, you know, what needs to change and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So then what happens at point three is essentially now we have all of the facts. We have our reality completely set and yeah. what we can even do too. Uh, well, actually, we're going to get to that to number five. But number four is out of all of this stuff that happened, what went well? Right. It doesn't all have to be shit. No. Again, looking yeah. at it from the armed forces perspective, if we have right. a successful mission, what did we do well? Right. And how do how can we continue to do that well moving forward? Yep. Um, now, unfortunately, business is a little bit different where like time is typically one of our most limiting resources yeah. and and setting aside the specific review time is a little bit more difficult it tends to be more problem based rather than like awesome right. awesome result right. yeah. based yeah However, if you, let's do an after action report to just pat ourselves on the back. Well, and like, some teams need to start that way. Yeah. To be perfectly honest, yep. like if you if you if you feel like you have a business that's not really ready to be fully accountable yep. and something just goes right and you really just want to edify good behavior. Yes. This could be a great way to yeah. start this. Yeah. Uh, yes, because what will happen is, well, we knew how to do that that time. Yeah. And now we have this problem in our second time of going through our after action report view yeah what's different yeah what caused yeah, our we actual did so results? well that time why didn't we do that well this time right and it's not because you're a bad person right it's i know you can do this i know you want to do this but this time was different what am i missing yeah, uh, yeah. And, yeah. yeah with one of our uh, staff members we've had that ongoing issue there was a time where the job was performed very very well at a very high level and then it sort of stopped Right. You know, so it, right. why? Why did that happen? Now, again, that's sort of an individual problem, so this isn't necessarily an after-action report. However, mm -hmm. if in having a case review or a discussion on point with that employee, you were performing high, now you're performing low, what's the difference? Mm -hmm. As soon as it becomes blame, okay, now we need to do an after-action. Right. Um, right. But still in that same capacity, and, and you're exactly right. Um, mm -hmm. And I think, um, like you said, from a time standpoint, to say it may be better for some teams to start out with doing a positive type after action report. Mm -hmm. I think what comes across, not all the time, um, but if you have a tendency for more unaccountable employees, um, is that in going through um, 
after action reports or case reviews, you'll get this constant feedback on saying, all you ever do is tell me what I do wrong. Mm -hmm. So it's when we sort of look at this as a tool and if the individual in of themselves are unaccountable, it's going to look like this is just an ongoing system of reprimand. Right. Um, where again, for us, we actually simply don't have time for reprimand. A lot of it, I mean, it, there was a time when that is, is important, but I'm saying for the most part, when you're focused on growth and opportunity to sort of objectively list these things to learn, listen from, there's so much more effort that needs to go into learning than there is in reprimand. Right, um, right. And that, that's kind of what that is. If you found something well that worked and it stopped, how do you get back to that place? And that's the funny part too. How many processes did we develop through going through this yeah right oh because yeah every other week we're <laughs> weekly to every other week we're doing it i know, you know it, uh, it, administratively you know because we, you know, we hear enough or you know well, and, but, but it's because we want to get better yeah right right, right. if we don't have this process and we just assume mm -hmm. that the pro the processes that we do have in place are enough right. or or even bet more than right. enough like yeah are yeah. we really doing a service here? Yeah. I will say I, I'm going to put a one caveat on that is we I did have a conversation with Katie and Annie earlier this week where it's like, well, we probably should have an after action report on these couple of pr problems because from my perspective, what it looks like is simply process that is written and is available wasn't met. And that's likely where, again, these are going to start. But I didn't want to assume that that's what all that it was. Yeah. So just go have the conversation. Right. And guess what? If they say, yeah, I just didn't do the process, great. That means I know yeah. how to fix it. Yeah. It's written. Right. It's right here. We already have the tool. And, and I still believe you can do it. Thanks for owning the fact that you didn't do yeah. it. Now this is how you can do it better. Yeah. Do you have any other ideas on maybe how we can improve it? That's a very different conversation than, hey, Johnny. You really botched the hell out of this one. Here's how you actually do this. Yeah. Go do this better. Yeah. Because if he has anything that he wants to input into the into this process or believes that is broken, yeah. he's going to look at the thing I just handed to him and say, that doesn't work. I'm not going to do it anyways. And now I really don't want to be here. Yeah, right. Because right. you yeah. didn't want to listen to me at all. Yeah, right. You had already made an assumption and what you thought the problem was. Right. And that's where, again, when we have our case reviews or we go to individuals and it's um, basically they place blame or they're somewhat unaccountable, mm -hmm. it's not because we don't want to listen. It's because I don't have enough facts for right. us to continue this conversation. Right. You know, so to say an after action report, I think then there's the hesitation on saying, well, every time you tell me what I do wrong. Well, but part of it is, well, maybe we don't have a f the picture we thought that we had. Um, and I'm not going to necessarily, well, except for our example before, I'm not going to speak on behalf right. of someone else right. um, in saying, well, here's. Well, you, you won't know. speak assumptively. Correct. I guess is a better yes. way to put yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so, so long story short, Question four, what went well? Yep. Question five, what were all of our problems? And and this is where we start yeah. to get into, all right, who can own these pieces of the problems? What are the solutions, temporary yeah. or permanent? Yep. How do we implement them? Yep. And again, that goes straight back to our mm -hmm. ladder to accountability. Um, yep. and, and so we've got root cause diving down into these problems. Yep. The cool part about that too is if when in question three, we like, Holy crap! I have sixteen problems. Yeah, right. I can't. Uh, question three being, what is the cause of actually? Yeah. Right, yeah. right. And where we're really going to start to look at. Oh boy, this is a lot. Yeah, I have everything out here now. Yeah. And the cool part is when you tend when you start to go why 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 why, typically sixteen turns into three, turns into four. Yeah. And it's like. Mm. Maybe I should just focus on that one. Yes. Maybe yeah. I should just break that one so that these other five symptoms yep. can just be eliminated. Yep. Tends yep. to be a little bit more efficient and, that way. And that is the industry overview. You yeah, know? exactly. I mean, yeah, that was the first, you know, uh, eight podcast that we had was mm -hmm. just dumbing down and saying, all right, if, if all we have is all of these things all the time, what is the base? What's right. the root? Right. So, but that's why I think we talk about scalability is root cause occurred on an industry level to say, here's all of the industry issues, but we're also breaking it down to say, nope, this is a format in which you can also do it on the individual basis within a team of two, three, five, ten people, and it has the same effect. It has mm -hmm. the same benefit as you come out of it ahead. You are further than you were when you started, and hopefully right. have identified opportunities to learn. Well, right. I mean, if you if that industry overview 
tried like in all of those solutions could have been implemented on an industry wide level. Yep. Probably would have been done already. Correct. But also, like Correct. that's not how this works. No. It happens clinic to clinic. It yes. happens person to person. Mm -hmm. And you start to understand and implement the solutions on an individual yeah. level. Yeah. I don't yeah. I don't there's not a governing body that's if effective, large, or even just like able enough. Yeah to do that no so just do it yourself yeah and if and if you make the difference between two to three to five people yeah it's awesome that was the, one of the first conversations that we had absolutely was yep. like yep. i get it like i understand this is definitely an industry problem yeah but can we solve it here right <laughs> <laughs> right and that 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 brett that that bled into then uh fix yourself yeah fix yourself first you right. know, fix the team, fix the clinic, fix the community, fix the industry. Is it's mm -hmm. taking that approach? If we have enough people who are pushing these ideals internally within themselves, it becomes infinitely easier as mm -hmm. you get to the team, as you get to the clinic, as you get to the community, as you get to some of these out. And that's where we've been able to branch these out into local humane societies and working with rescues. And it's like, we have a system in place that works. Let us help you help you. Right. You know, right. And even up to universities now too. Universities, yeah. But but that took some time. Yep. I mean, yep. honestly, several years, several yeah. several years to even yep. like start that process yes. because it was all right. We got to get our room in order first, yes. and then we can scale it up a little bit yep. into some other organizations that are already interfacing kind of with us quite a bit. Yep. And and we're still even working on those. Like those, oh, yeah. and we're still working on ourselves. It's yeah. a never ending yeah. project. Constant root cause, constant after action. It's all of it. However, the cool part about it is as we've implemented both the case review and the after action review report tools, whatever you want to call them, is unity's gone up. Yep. Trust has gone up, yep. respect has gone up, and accountability has yep. gone up. Yep. We've started to spin the wheel yep. around serving the patient so much more efficiently. I believe so. That we can step away from it a mm -hmm. little bit and start to start to get it plugged in other places. Yep. So yep. when when you're thinking as you're listening to this, like, yeah, that sounds great, but I don't even know where to start. Right. Like. Well, you start small. Yeah. You start with little individual mm -hmm. scenarios because you have to start the machine somehow. Yeah. And yeah. and if you try to implement it across the board all the way, I honestly think you're probably going to fall flat on your face mm -hmm. be because it's this is tough. Yeah, it's tough to have these conversations, and especially considering the behavioral tendencies of the people that are in our industry being yep. tend tend to be non confrontational. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't necessarily like to uh be uh, to create conflict you gotta start small because yeah. you have to understand the value of the bigger conflicts that are probably down the road yeah one of my uh colleagues i was talking to um you know she was kind of saying that you know we've kind of been talking going through the podcast and so on and so forth um and saying you know oh, I, you know i think i'm having a midlife crisis you know mm -hmm. because there's so much broken in the industry and in my or in my own clinic and you know, staff and this and this. And I said, it's not, you know, I said, if, if you want to have midlife crisis, you can. I said, but you're waking up. Right. You know, is that we get stuck culturally. And that's that's where, you know, to say, where do I start? I can't do this. You know, the culture and core values PDF is all of this stuff combined on our website. Honest to God, dedicate to reading it once a week, cover to cover. Right. Just keep reading it. And, right. and what she had basically came back, she's now that I'm finishing up the book and I'm coming with the podcast, is that now you start to recognize, like, oh, this person's acting that way. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, oh, I'm actually acting this way. Oh, I'm actually, oh, I'm actually. So, you know, to effectively have an after, like you said, you can't do it all at once, mm -hmm. you know, to effectively enact an after action report, it has to come back to that individual. You have to have a challenge or someone who is focused on learning and growth, but has to know this process. You can't half-ass it. Right. You know, so to keep, you know, and, and again, for us, uh, the, the, you can put it in the link description, there's other books that go into this in more depth and more detail, probably have mm -hmm. better examples. Mm -hmm. um, this is like the ultra boiled down version of that process, but they just keep going through it, keep going through it, understand right. the drama dynamic, understand the empowerment dynamic, understand these different parts of accountability um, is a great first start to just fix yourself and be self-aware. Mm -hmm. But as you start to wake up, it starts to become so much easier to recognize it. It's yeah. so much easier. And the solutions are so much easier. Right. And like you said, our ability to serve the patient is, is just more efficient, mm -hmm. you know, because we're all there for the same purpose. No one is working for themselves exactly and then when you try to implement these processes and you get kickback 
you can even roll it down one more level and this is my segue by the way yeah is that if you if you, if you're just getting resistance the next time you make a mistake go up to the person that you made the like that was impacted by that mistake ask him to forgive you right and we'll get into how, kind of yeah. how to do that a little yes. bit more yeah. but you're going to crack open the door to vulnerability yeah. and start to work your way mm -hmm. up uh yeah. from there humble the, and humility coming into the forgiveness model exactly um, that is of course going to be our next episode but so uh yeah stay tuned i'm really excited to talk about the forgiveness model next week it's probably one of the things that i i love the most about yes. all of this maybe <laughs> yes. because i wrote it uh <laughs> but uh yes. re really excited to to wrap all of these pieces because again accountability uh, I mean, it's, it's one of our core values yeah. that we've, we're going to stick five episodes into because yeah. it is so, it is when we figured it out yeah. and it worked. Yeah, I know. And, and, I, know. and I, I really think that it could make a great difference in every business, but especially within some of the veterinary clinics that, that we're aware of, or, or just the way yeah. that we kind of understand the industry yep. has operated yep. over the last 40 years. Yeah. So, yeah. uh, any, anything else, Dr. Carl? No, no, I think that's right. good. I, I think at the, yeah, like you said, uh, forgiveness next week, but, um, yeah. And I, I just, I just find it intriguing that we've had this many episodes going into essentially ending at one core value, mm -hmm. you know, to say, we haven't even talked about all the other processes and that right. kind of, there's still so much more content to come. <laughs> <laughs> so, but forgive us next week. Yes. So. Forgiveness next week. Stay tuned. We will see you guys right. then. Oh, 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 oh,